Hi everybody, I'm Mrs. Bella Neo, Head of Economics from uh, Indigo. Today I've invited two of my ex-students who are here to talk about the A-Level 2022 Econs paper. So hi, my name is Kong Shen. Um, I'm a D J3 this year and I'm from Hwa Chong Institution. Hi, I'm Richard and I'm also a J3 and I was from Raffles Institution. Uh, maybe you all would like to tell us what are your thoughts about uh, the Econs papers? H2 Economics consists of both Paper 1 and Paper 2. In Paper 1, we did CSQ. And if I recall correctly, first question was about on Australia bushfire. And second was about um, electronic cars, right? <laughs> vehicles. I, yes, vehicles. And I, find, I found the paper quite standard. Um, and the difficulty level compared to my school prelim papers, um, this um, A-level paper should be relatively easier, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, I think this CSQ, I think if you mark enough and you study your content well, I think it was more about reading the content and transferring the content within um, both the CSQ um, and the, the case study materials into the question and how do you apply it. I think that was the most difficult part of the paper. Um, it was a lot of macro questions, actually, um, it tested a lot on your macro knowledge. So if you actually prepare for my micro and macro case studies separately, I think it will be, be quite difficult because they mesh the two topics together. So it's quite important that you have like a uh, overview of the whole um, syllabus as a whole. Uh. That's why you can uh, put both micro and macro at work within the questions. Yeah, and I think the unexpected part was that they mesh the question, yeah. right? Which usually they do not do as much. Yeah. yeah. Actually, like if you do like the prelim papers, I remember I did from 2020, 2021. Actually, some schools have actually come out with electric vehicles as part of their CSQ. So it's very important that you do other schools' prelim papers as well. And yeah. if you look through the TYS, I think that's also very important. And also time management is the main key component because CSQ data has been getting very long. Yeah. So if you do not read concisely and spot the you know the main uh, argument that the passage is trying to give you, I think you may waste quite a bit of time and that may you know compromise you in answering your the questions and yeah your answer quality may not be as good as you hope for. Right, you've got to sift the materials carefully, Correct. right, before you can use them as case evidence. Exactly. Yes. Okay, what about your thoughts for the paper two then? Paper two, I would say paper two will be a lot more standard compared to paper one because as what we have been doing in schools, uh, question one to three are usually the micro questions and four to six are the macro and Cambridge has been following this pattern so far for this for last year paper and for me personally I did question one five and six and to me the questions that I did were I found it quite interesting and at the same time if you study the content hard enough and know how to see them and write them in a coherent argument shouldn't be a big problem yeah I think for me I did one three and five um, I think I will just cover like three because it's a market failure question and I think what was different this year from Cambridge was that market failure wasn't just about the normal content, negative externality, positive externalities. It was more about understanding the concepts and bringing public goods and negative externalities together, which is something that uh, most schools don't really teach, actually. And most schools don't actually teach you how to mesh different um, types of market failures together and how different types of market failures can be present in a single good. So that was the trickiest part of the paper, in my opinion. Um, I think that for question, the other questions, like two and four, uh, why I didn't choose them, or like six actually, was because I think uh, those were more content heavy questions and sometimes for like demand and supply questions, I think it was very vague and it was harder for me to grasp what the question was actually trying to ask. Um, six definitely was a good question choice, if you chose yes. it, um, you study hard enough, that's a guaranteed at least 20 plus marks for you. Yeah, it's, it's one of those very predictable uh, questions, right? Yeah, correct, correct. yeah and I, I guess a lot of students are very happy, you know, when they saw question six. Yeah, and that's like, me. Yeah. <laughs> At the first instant, that's my top choice, yes. right? Yeah. And also to add on, I feel like Cambridge has been going through, um, going to the path of where they want students to apply more rather than just pure regurgitation. So in, uh, for example, like the um, essay question four, I think there is like question, like the question demand is not just purely uh, like one like one line sentence or just you know surface level. So they want you to know like both. Um, hence arguments and how you're going to portray it based on the question requirements and they set the context. For example, question four will be in post-pandemic um, 
Yeah. Yeah, right? Am I right? Right, right, yeah. right. So you need to find relevant points. It's not just those points that the school notes gave you. And sometimes your common knowledge can help you a lot also in answering the questions. Right. I think your real world events, yes, correct. right, and knowledge of yeah. what's going on is very important. Yes. And you need to have a very integrated view. Correct. Right? Yeah. In what way has Indigo helped you, you know, excel? So far, you know, I know you're very good students. You have been doing very well in school and I'm quite optimistic, in fact, very confident that you're going to do very well for this coming A-level. So maybe you can share your starting tips with uh, students out there? Okay, I think uh, for me, how Indigo has helped is actually, um, I enjoy that, the fact that uh, when I come for Indigo lessons, right, I'm actually forced to think, like, I'm, I don't just look at a question, or this is the answer, and therefore this is always the answer you should write. I think thinking about why you should write the answer is very important. Why did you write this point, and like, how this point is actually relevant? Because it's not every time that you get the same question, or definitely the same question, these few points. Sometimes you come up with a different question, and you have a bit of curveball. You have to actually think, like, how can I adapt whatever points that I know into fitting into the question? Because you never know what kind of questions Cambridge can ask. And knowing why you write the answer is the most important to me. Like. And as for some tips I have, I think not really much tips. Study everything and make sure you understand the nitty gritty of all the topics that you are tested on. Even if you think that it is irrelevant, even if you think that oh, this is just a supplementary thing, actually even H3 topics sometimes, if your teacher tells you, you might think it's irrelevant, but you never know when it might actually come in as useful yes. or like supplementary yeah. information, then you can always write in your essay. Cambridge doesn't just want you to write H2, they can accept H3 points as well and you can accept anything that you know and is relevant. So why not just learn a bit more and have a better understanding of economics as a whole instead of just thinking, oh, this is just an exam, this is just what I need to know, nothing else, everything out of syllabus, I just don't want to know. Have an open mind towards learning more. La. I think that's what I'll say. That's so well said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. To me, so I joined Indigo in 2021. I came here as a form of comfort blanket because I have never taken economics before and at a, okay, my school teachers are wonderful and fantastic. It's just that at the start of J1, I was very insecure about economics. So I was like, oh, why not I go for a tuition centre and give it a try first. Yeah, so my first part lesson was with Mrs. Neil and I was quite impressed with her teaching because in my school, the lectures are very long-winded and basically it will just be reading out from the notes. But for Mrs. Neil, she will actually, you know, let you brainstorm and make you think on the spot whether you actually understood the question with question demand well. And from there, I was like, wow, it actually made me, you know, be more proactive, think more, comprehend more. And that's how I actually, you know, improve myself from learning. And some tips I have are study consistently. Don't just, you know, push it at the end of the month or like, you know, two months beforehand because economics is also like biology where you need constant uh, memorization and regurgitation. Some of the keywords cannot be neglected when you're writing and those have to be inside like, basically, such as like, externality and you know, you know the, the seven steps in writing it, drawing the diagrams, especially for films and decisions, if you didn't draw consistently, you will forget which are your curves, for, for example, the MCAC, how you're supposed to shift them. And it's very, like, it can be very confusing when the question asks you to you know, have multiple shifts in one question. Right, right. Yeah. So familiar, familiarize yourself with the diagrams, know your content well, remember all the nitty gritty like what he said, and all these can actually help you a lot. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's a lot of hard work, Correct. effort, right attitude. Yeah. 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 And that should, you know, ensure that at the end you will be able to excel. Indigo can help you with that also. Right. That's good. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. Right. And. Uh, I would like to inform you that there is a promotion going on for Humanities Subjects and Indigo like for Econs and Job and for more info, you can go to the description box. Bye! Hi alert. Okay, wait. <laughs> Bye! Maybe do one more time, it's not Yeah. Okay, thank like you, not, okay. Okay. <laughs>